Hey, Deb. Hey, guys. Hi. Nice to see you found your way to the meeting room. Yes, I did. Good. Hi, Deepak. Hello. It's uh, it's eleven o'clock, so I uh, eleven p.m. So I can I'm looking as fresh as I can be. I see. Okay. Did you get, did you get some rest on the flight, Deb? Not much, man. Uh, it was uh, it was a roundabout flight, it was not a direct flight. I had to go through Tokyo and uh, then uh, LA. So uh, got got in, um, had some dinner. It was just about, and I was I was, text, I, I was talking with Jonathan just to make sure that we are we are all on sync. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see. We've got a, a minute or so, so we can see how many people join. Uh, you know, twenty five minutes goes really quickly. So depending on how many people join, uh, you 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 don't have to feel rushed. Right. So there can be plenty of time, and we play it by ear. So I appreciate that uh, that you have uh, already um, content. Yeah, so twenty five minutes probably. Like I was, like I mentioned on the email, probably Deepak. I think it will take about fifteen to eighteen minutes for us to do the question answer. Probably. Maybe maybe yeah. eighteen eighteen minutes. So we'll have five to seven minutes for questions. Anyway, Singapore. Audience don't normally ask questions, so they don't. No. So yeah. people are people are coming from uh, prior sessions and also from uh, roundtables and workshops. So I noticed that uh, Data Stacks has already had some sessions today, so I hope they went well, and that encourages people to come and and dig in deeper into a use case. Um. Right, so just looking at who we have here in the in the chat, a few people here. Uh, we have Shai Ping, and then a few people from API Days. Okay. So I'll give it another minute or so. And just looking at the earlier sessions, what were they? So we had Niraj Nadu talking about leading digital transformation with open data stack. And then we had Alan Wu talking about um, building modern cloud. Alan one. Yeah, Alan one, one. Alan one, yeah. Building modern cloud native applications. So I think, uh, okay, with that, what I'll do is I'll just uh, introduce the speakers and um, let them have this discussion. So we, we've got some very senior members here. Deb Dutta, General Manager, Asia Pacific and Japan at Datastax. Uh, I think he's just been traveling, so he's at some unwieldy hour. And we have Deepak uh, Sada, VP of Engineering at Indow Us, I believe based in Singapore at the moment. So, um, so the the purpose of this session is is really to to hear from these gentlemen about their journey um, and um, how they've been working together. So with that, I'll allow them to introduce themselves and also the uh, the topic. So over to you, gentlemen. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, just to mention a little bit about Data Stacks before we get into the conversation, uh, we at Data Stacks support real time data applica applications with an open data stack that just works. Um, our technology is fundamentally built of two different components, which are both based on very prominent open source software projects under the Apache Foundation. The first is Cassandra, the very popular NoSQL database, and Pulsar, which is the standard for a leading standard for streaming and messaging, both run under the Apache Foundation. A good example of an organization whose business thrives on real-time data is Endowas in Singapore, a fast-growing fintech company. Today, I'm very pleased to uh, have in this panel with me, Deepak Sada, 
Deepak is the Vice President Engineering at Endavas. And uh, as I said, we are privileged to have him in, as a part of the panel. So Deepak, uh, could you please introduce yourself and uh, tell the audience a little bit about what Endavas does? So over to you. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so wonderful to be here uh, with you. Uh, we always have fun chatting, so it's uh, great to get this chat, uh, just the casual chat, but now, you know, maybe for the benefit of everyone about how Endavas actually thinks about real-time data. No better person to have that chat with than you. Endavas itself, uh, so we are a Singapore-based uh, digital investment and wealth management platform. And we are really designed uh, to make it easy for anyone to invest their money with confidence. So what we do is we basically provide a fully digital experience. So you can go to our website or download our app and create an account uh, all online. Then you set your financial goals, you set your risk appetite. Then we create and maintain a very well diversified investment portfolio that's designed spe specifically for you, that individual, right? Um, you can use your cash or you can use your public pension money. So in Singapore context, that's your CPF and SRS and use those to fund your investments. And we'll kind of you know, manage that investment uh, over time for you. Uh, in fact, we are the first FinTech in Singapore to offer this full flexibility where you can bring your CPF SRS, but also your cash and give you like a holistic uh, way of investing and managing uh, uh, all your money. Uh, yeah, since our launch in 2019, we have been growing very, very rapidly. Uh, we have three x our customer base, and uh, we are now managing more than uh, 1.5 billion in customer assets. Uh, so that's the level of trust that customers have placed in us. Uh, this has all been in Singapore, and later this year, we are looking forward to our first in international expansion in Hong Kong. So that's coming up. So that's a bit about Endavis. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So nicely put, Deepak. So. And Davos, as, a, as we understand it, is simplifying investment for its customers and giving them the investment confidence by offering financial products that are rightly positioned based on their stage in life. And you're also pairing them with low-cost access to best-in-class financial products. Correct? Now, these features obviously need access to real-time data and insights. And that was my, my first point, right? So uh, you agree with that. Can you be a little more specific on how Datastax's data Astra platform supports Endowers with these deliverables? Yeah, great question. So I'll peel, it, peel back the onion layers a little bit, right? So Datastax Astra, uh, and then before that is Cassandra, which you mentioned is like the primary open source technology underpinning Astra, uh, which we heavily leverage. And I want to talk about the business context which drives that leverage and drives that need for uh, Cassandra and Astra, right? And so the business context is, I mentioned it's personalized financial advice uh, at low cost. Um, so, so what we do is essentially give our customers an ability to you know, personalize their investment and, and we take a goal-based approach to investment. So individuals, as you know, have different life goals. Uh, someone wants to buy a car, someone wants to uh, pay for their kid's college or you know, fund their retirement and so on and so forth. So people are not investing in a vacuum, right? Like they have real goals and they want to realize those goals. And so from an investment perspective, it's not so much about I need like X percent of return. It's more about can I fulfill that life goal and is my investment actually going to help me meet that life goal? So for us, when we think about financial ad advice that's personalized, we want to tailor it to that individual and make sure that we are maximizing the probability that that individual will meet that financial goal that they have set out for themselves. Now that problem statement means that we have to build a very comprehensive understanding of that individual's financial situation, look at all the data points, look at their time horizon, their risk comfort level, everything, and synthesize all of that data in creating that personalized portfolio for them, right? So from that business context comes this need to be able to store large volumes of data, both at an individual level, but also at an aggregate level, right? When you think about risk and things like that. Um, and having quick and flexible access to it. 
And then as we are scaling as a business, you layer on things like, you know, uh, we are a financial regulated entity. So things like security, compliance, availability, all of these start coming in. This is really where Cassandra has served us superbly well, right? So uh, I mentioned since 2019, you know, exponential growth, but Cassandra with its kind of virtually limitless storage scale, but paired with very, very predictable performance, extremely high resiliency, extremely high availability, and being the de facto standard in the space, broad availability, like we have a microservices architecture, so availability and access from all the languages and tools that we support has been phenomenal, right? Uh, so that's why Cassandra and Astra have been super, super valuable and fundamental to our needs as we grow, right? But that's, that's actually like not even the interesting bit because that's, you know, bread and butter. What really makes it interesting for us uh, with Cassandra and Astra is, um, is when we, again, going back to that business context. So when we, when we offer an investment portfolio, um, you know, when we started, we started with one product. We started with like a core wealth accumulation product. We call it our core, core flagship product. But over time, we started adding more product to support more variety of goals. Like I want to, I want to have a stable income in my retirement. That's my goal. Or, you know, I need to manage cash for a short term duration. That's my goal. And we launched more sophisticated products to support this. But the thing, this is where Cassandra truly shines because as we are launching these new products, the way we think about that data, the way we kind of think about, you know, the individual's profile, et cetera, changes, right? And the last thing we want to do is do this whole thing where we are redesigning our base schemas, you know, all of that kind of stuff to be able to build new products. And so Cassandra's support for semi-structured, unstructured data means that as a business capability grows, we don't have to remodel everything, right? We don't have to spend months doing like a data migration with all of that overhead just to launch a new business product. And so those two perspectives, you know, having a very reliable, very scalable data store and support for, uh, you know, semi-structured and unstructured data, these have been really, really useful in delivering, you know, our core mission, which is basically tailored financial advice for everyone. It, it sounds great when it comes from a customer like you uh, as to, you know, the, the belief that you share with a belief of ours that uh, Cassandra and Astra are is a re very reliable data store. Um, that's great, but let's extend that a little bit more because at DataSax, we believe that is not enough because then with that, we are just covering data at rest. Um, what about changes in data, right? When, when, when there's a change in the data store, that information in real time needs to be transmitted through reliable connectors to other uh, other uh, applications, your entire internal ecosystem, that could be a data warehouse, it could be a messaging system, it could be a downstream app, or it could be an AI ML engine. Yeah. Uh, does this paradigm apply to Endowers in, in the way you are planning your application infrastructure? Absolutely. Uh, and we have been like this from day one, right? Uh, um, now, if you look at the broader financial industry, uh, I mean, it's the, the entire industry has been responding to this whole move to real time, right? Um, uh, you know, end of day batch processes, they are getting replaced by more and more real time systems. Um, cash movements, like, you know, sending money to someone else, it used to take anywhere from two to five days. And now in, you know, many situations, many contexts, moving money is almost instantaneous, right? Uh, so that entire industry is moving. And personally, I spent uh, almost a decade in, uh, you know, uh, equities trading infrastructure. So building trading systems, settlement systems, even that world. And uh, that world actually has its origin almost 400 plus years ago, because like the first stock exchange, I think was in Amsterdam around 1600, right? So that that level of legacy is also moving to real time where, you know, 
T plus three settlement comes down to T plus two settlement. And now increasingly we are looking at, you know, a real time settlement. The whole interest in blockchain is around, you know, how can we make settlement faster and things like that. So the entire industry is moving to be more real time. That's kind of, you know, my bread and butter in financial services. But Endow specifically, I mean, we started 100% real time on day one because we are like we are born in this generation, right? So we took advantage of that uh, evolution in thinking and we said, okay, we have to start with the assumption that everything is going to be real time, right? Uh, so our core stack is uh, built uh, to be real time. We use event sourcing principles and we have domain events kind of flowing around in real time. And that's the core primitive of our data platform, right? You know, a real time event, a domain event that's flowing. Um, and these events feed everything. Uh, they feed everything from our client side apps, our web app or our mobile app. Uh, and they feed also our data warehouse and all of the integrations that we use with our partners to kind of move assets around our money around and things like that. Um, uh, one, one interesting thing of being born with a real time system is that uh, at the edge, we, we kind of convert occasionally from real time to batch because some of the existing world is still batch. So we are in the opposite world where we are, you know, real time at core, but do batch integrations uh, at the edge. But that's kind of besides the point. <laughs> um, uh, so, so yeah, we do all of this uh, real-time stuff, um, uh, and you know, we're using microservices, of course, to coordinate all of this. Now, now, when it comes to the microservices we build and control, uh, right? So, building a real-time infrastructure is kind of easy, right? Because you know, you are building everything from scratch, you are designing everything to event uh, uh, with event schemas and event principles, etc. All of that is easy, but but you still have to build integrations, right? So, you know, at the edge uh, with your partners or some legacy systems, et cetera. So you have to build these integrations and every integration has like two layers to it. There's the business layer of what business functionality it's you know, achieving, but then it's also the other layer, which is kind of the same thing everywhere, which is authentication, uh, making sure, you know, the event schemas are in sync between the two parties, uh, failure handling and retries, uh, building observability into that integration layer. So there's always these two layers for every single integration, the business layer and then the infrastructure layer of the integration, right? Uh, this is where, you know, the older among older people among us, uh, I'm giving away my age, you know, we, re we reach for our enterprise integration patterns book and say, okay, what, what pattern do I implement over here, right? But, but this is kind of what, where, you know, uh, uh, if you don't have the organizational discipline, every integration pattern starts becoming very, very bespoke, right? So that, that authentication, retry, all of that, uh, you end up building it slightly differently in every integration. And that becomes a complete uh, nightmare from a security and governance perspective, right? You don't want to have that. What's much better, honestly, is if you have something uh, like, for example, uh, Astra's uh, change data capture technology, because it, it takes away all of those concerns and standardizes them, right? And so you can focus just on the business layer uh, and see what is this integration actually trying to achieve from the business layer and make sure that you have the standard fabric, the standard plumbing to achieve real-time integrations uh, with everyone else and do it in a kind of a, you know, meet all our needs around security and governance, et cetera. So I'm actually quite keen to understand from you, Dave, like, you know, you know, do you kind of share this perspective in terms of Astra CDC's value proposition in security and governance? Yeah, actually, um, just a couple of days ago, we were having a similar conversation with a customer of ours uh, regarding CDC. And there has been a lot of momentum uh, on the CDC capability, uh, not only for Astra, but also for people who are using our, our managed, self-managed uh, 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 footprint, which is called Data Stacks Enterprise, and even for the open source uh, Cassandra version as well. So CDC is ca uh, catching up in momentum very rapidly. See, uh, Deepak, what is going to happen is that in the near term use cases would be things like audit logging, uh, detection and analysis of change anomalies, uh, or a broader fraud detection use case could emerge. But what, you know, in all these conversations that we are having, what I'm really excited about is the prospect of CDC feeding data into a downstream AI ML engine 
where the inbuilt algorithms of that engine will support the security and governance framework that the organization defines. Uh, that's really exciting, exciting for us. And uh, we'll get there sooner rather than later. Uh, so that's that's my view of how it is uh, how it will CDC will play out specifically in the security and governance framework. Right. Yeah. That's um, but, like... All right. Go ahead. No, no. I'm saying that sounds exciting, and yeah, can't can't you know wait for that uh, and see how that uh, helps us on our own AIML uh, initiatives. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but Deepak, I wanted to. Uh, your brains on something else that you talked about microservices and containers and you know this is very holy for us in how you're building building out our our platform uh, how are you embracing these to create lightweight secure and scalable applications uh, you know what benefits is endowers specifically gaining from a business perspective by deploying uh, containerization and microservices in your application build out yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just like with real time, uh, we adopted uh, microservices architecture pretty much from day one. So we have been 100% on microservices architecture. Uh, and I would say this has been uh, a, a very key advantage to us uh, as a business. Uh, uh, just to give you a sense of scale, today we have, I would say, about 40 plus business uh, microservices across our back end front end as well as back end for front end like middleware layer and they are all running on containers orchestrated by kubernetes right uh, we use uh, scala uh, and the akka ecosystem which has very strong support for building event source microservices um, and and you know it allows us to use uh, principles of domain driven design to kind of think about the domain boundaries of each service and use event sourcing principles as well um, and so all of this container and microservices architecture has obviously helped our business needs in terms of uh, maximizing uptime, achieving scalability, cost effectiveness in terms of you know, deployment uh, um, of our uh, workflows. Um, uh, one example comes to mind. So for example, uh, our trading service, uh, when we launched initially in the early days, we had just like a couple of instances of that trading service, like two, two containers. Um, and that was enough. Uh, but as our business grew, uh, you know, we just kind of started spinning up and it's now supporting, you know, we 10x the number of containers and nothing had to change, right? It's just kind of horizontal scalability at the container level. And so this has been really useful from a business perspective because we have been, we didn't have to re-architect uh, all of that piece to support the business scale. Um, uh, for, like, I, I actually think that the microservices discussions and discourse kind of stops at this, which is, you know, hey, all our containers are horizontally scalable and, you know, uh, life is good, right? <laughs> but if you think about it, like you step back and say, okay, just scaling containers is not enough because that's just the compute layer, right? Uh, if you just scale containers and you're backed by a traditional database, which is just like, you know, running in your typical active passive mode, et cetera, uh, you know, Yes, you scale your containers 10x, but your database is still that single monolith sitting over there. And I'm sure every developer has figured out, okay, how do I increase the number of DB connections in my database pool, right? Like these kinds of discussions start coming in. And some of the junior developers discover, oh, this is why we have connection pools, right? <laughs> so 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 you actually need a date, you actually need your data layer to scale just like your compute layer is scaling. And this is again, you know, going back to the benefits of Cassandra, where it's just designed for that horizontal scalability. And you can't just think microservices will solve everything. You have to think about your data layer itself. It has to be equally scalable, just like your, you know, compute layer. Um, so that's why Cassandra, we love Cassandra. But what what we really found great value there was we we actually adopted data stacks astra right which is kind of you know your version of cassandra which you build and manage because now we have cuz okay or, originally cassandra's design is you know okay you can scale horizontally all you need to add is uh, throw in more compute throw in more storage and cassandra scales that's the design and 
but with Astra, I don't even have to do that, right? Data Stacks manages that for me. You know, I just have to scale my container tier and behind the scenes, Astra is scaling, keeping up with our scale on the compute side and Astra is kind of completely managing uh, the scaling and management of Cassandra itself. So I have scaled my compute tier, I have scaled my data tier and funnily, or and a very, very business valuable perspective is I've also scaled my DevOps layer, right? Because I don't actually need to spend as much energy in scaling and managing Cassandra, which is very, very important for a growing business like ours. I really want to keep my platform, my DevOps team very, very lean, right? And that's that like that also is one reason why I'm also very excited by this whole serverless movement. Because you know, it's the same benefit I see. Uh, in serverless conversations, uh, just like in container, it's all about horizontal scalability. In serverless conversations, I see a lot of discussion about you know usage-based pricing and all of that kind of stuff. That's yes, important, meaningful. But from my perspective, again, what makes serverless such a great innovation is that I can completely outsource the operational concerns to another service provider, right? Uh, uh, and and I know Dave, you are cooking something in the serverless area, so I know I've already benefited from Astra uh, by you know m giving you the responsibility to scale my Cassandra, but I'm keen to hear what you're doing with serverless. Yeah, I mean, um, serverless has really taken off. Yeah. Uh, Astra has taken off, but serverless is, has taken off like crazy. In fact, we grew this space 400% year over year because, you know, the, exactly the things, the benefits that you mentioned are, are uh, big appeal factors for most organizations which are scaling, which are scaling their business like in Davos's. So when we say serverless, Deepak, we, we mean simplicity. Simplicity to set up, uh, simplicity to operate, simplicity in scaling up. So you don't obviously, you don't provision for peak. You, you don't worry about your workloads going through peaks and troughs. We take care of that. The, the thing that uh, users have to just think about is how many reads, how many writes, how much of storage is required and how much of data transfer. That's it. That, those are the frameworks on which we build that whole sizing exercise mm -hmm. and provision uh, Astra accordingly for you. Uh, now, um, so for any organization, uh, it is not just scaling the scaling Cassandra, like you very rightly said, but everything surrounding Cassandra, when you need it, where you need it, in global scale, right? Um, uh, and the big leverage here, obviously, is the cloud, right? But if you mentioned DevOps. If you want to, you can, you can really lean up your DevOps layer. But if you still want some level of DevOps control, you've got an API, a DevOps API with uh, role-based access. Uh, through that API, you can now create, terminate, resize, park, and park your database as well. So it's, it, it totally is up to you as a user how much control you want, how, how much you want to play in the whole thing, and how much you want us to take care of your of your infrastructure, data infrastructure, so that you can focus on running Endavas's business, which is the the primary thing for you. Uh, so this is this is the value proposition, and, and all this is backed by the power of Cassandra that you so aptly and nicely mentioned earlier on. So thanks for that high throughput, low latency zero downtime and a multimodal database, right? Multimodal database where you can have multiple data models. And while we are talking about this, of course, the TCO is a big angle, right? Uh, because what Datastax has further done is for organizations like you uh, who have write heavy applications, right? We have significantly reduced the write costs also so that the TCO gets even further, uh, further accentuated, which is becoming very attractive to uh, to um, uh, all the customers who use our stuff, so it's been it's been fun. It's been fun doing it. It's been fun serving customers like yourselves and many others like you who are scaling their business rapidly with real time application. Jonathan, over to you. Well, di digesting the information, it's it's been a real education and very impressive how quickly you've built built the capabilities at Endow us and also the alignment with the business. So this session is being recorded. I think we've come to the, the formal end of the session. Uh, any questions could be put into the chat. I'd also sort of direct um, uh, people to the uh, partner village 
for more information on data stacks. Um, if there's any other resources you gentlemen would like to put out there, please please type them in the chat. Um, I could I could attempt to summarize this, but really it's covered everything. It's covered from the business use case, data at rest, data in motion, real time data, integration, compute, and futures. Right. So it's it's, it's really been quite quite amazing how you guys have 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 figured all this out in a, in a short space of time to 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 build the customer base and also to meet the compliance standards, right? This is quite incredible. Um, so thanks very much for, for, for sharing this. And um, with that, I'll formally close the session. And like I say, anyone who wants to put any uh, questions or anything in the chat or catch up uh, with, with the, um, the gentleman on the partner village, uh, especially data stacks. Okay, thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, Deepak. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Deepak. Thanks, Dan. Pleasure being here. Bye. Bye.